Hey, it's Lon Seidman from CTTechJunkie.com. You know, we have a responsibility now to protect ourselves online, not just for our own sake and our own personal information, but also the personal information that others share with us. And over the last several months, I've noticed that a lot of my friends that are using Yahoo Mail and Hotmail and a bunch of other uh, free email applications out there are getting hacked on, a, on an almost daily basis. And uh, it's pretty scary because what happens is, is once these hackers get into your account, whether it's an automated attack or something that they've focused specifically on a person, uh, they have access to not only that person's email, but potentially a bunch of other stuff too. Because let's not forget that when you have a password reset or if you're using an online service that emails you a password, uh, there's a lot that hackers and other un unsavory people can get out of those accounts and start using against you and your friends and family. So it's really important uh, to protect yourself online. And one thing that Google has done recently is added something called two-factor authentication to their system. And what this basically entails is using a mobile phone along with your password to better protect yourself. And the way it works is you put in your password like you usually do, but then you also go to your phone and either receive a text message or run an app and get a number that gets changed every 10 or 15 seconds or so. Uh, so it makes it more difficult for someone to hack into your account with just the password. And if you think about it, it makes sense because you know all of the things that we're doing online are really protected by one password. It's kind of scary. So uh, this is a way to make your account a little bit more secure. Uh, Google is doing this better than most of the other email providers out there, which is why I'm going to recommend it. And uh, you know your first step really should be to set up a Gmail account uh, to, to start with and maybe get yourself off of some of those other email services uh, because Google is doing this right and I think it's important to, for your own sake, just to protect yourself better. So we're going to walk you through the steps it takes to uh, turn this on for a Google account. And what's nice about Google now is that this uh, authentication system works across all of Google services. So Google Drive, which is where your docs are, are kept now, uh, your YouTube account, your Gmail account, just about everything you do on Google uh, will be protected by this system. And it's a little involved and it could be a little scary to set up, but we're going to walk you through each step and uh, let's, let's take a look at it. So here's how you set it up. We are in our, our Gmail account here for our dummy account. And on almost, actually everyone's Gmail account, you're going to have a section where you can click on uh, your account name and you'll have a link here for account. So we're going to go over there. And you want to look for security on the left hand side. And you'll see something for two-step verification and we're going to click edit. And right now it should say status is off. And it's going to give us a few instructions here, but you've got me, so you don't need to worry about all of that. And we're going to click uh, Start Setup. And the first thing it's going to want is a phone number. So I'm going to type in my cell phone number right now. And what it's going to do is send a text message to my cell phone. Now, if you don't want to use a cell phone, uh, you can also put in a voice number and have it call you. And it'll actually call you, the robot will call you with a uh, verification number that you're going to put in. So. Um, I am now waiting for the text message on my cell phone here. So once that uh, shows up, we will continue with the process here. All right, so they gave me a number. So I'm going to uh, just cut back to our computer screen here and type that number in and continue to the next step. Now the next step here is it's saying trusted computers only ask for verification codes once every 30 days. And actually Google has extended this so it's more than 30 days now. But basically what you want to do, is, and this is a choice you can make here, so you don't have to do this um, and you can uncheck this box that I'm about to leave checked. Um, but basically what this does is it um, tr makes the computer trusted so that it won't ask you for one of those verification codes every time you try to log in. So if you're on a, you know, a home computer that only you use, uh, that's probably a safe thing to do. Uh, but if you're using a laptop or something that could be easily stolen or if you're um, on a public workstation somewhere setting this up, uh, you may want to uncheck this box. But we're going to check it for now. We're going to click Next. And now it's going to make sure that we really want to do this. And it's giving us some options here because um, if you lose your phone, uh, you really have a, you're going to have a hard time getting into your account because the phone becomes very much tied to your Google account. But there are some other alternatives that you can use to get into your Google account should your phone get lost or if you upgrade it or something like that. And I'm going to show you how that works right now. Um, the reason why you may want to have the trusted computer thing checked when you start the account initially is that at least the, your computer itself, the one you're using to start with, uh, will not put you through that verification code process every time you try to log in. Uh, and that way you could go in and then change the two-factor authentication settings to get yourself back 
uh, up and running again. But we're going to click Confirm. OK, so now that we've clicked Confirm, uh, if anyone tries to log into our account anywhere except this computer that I'm on right now, they will ask, be asked for a verification code that is right now tied only to my cell phone. So uh, we've added a layer of security now that will likely prevent just about any hacker, unless they're really, really, really good, uh, from getting into this account right now. So now we're protected. But uh, everything you normally use <laughs> your account for, including email on your cell phone, is also now barred from getting in there. Uh, so we're going to show you how to get all that set up. Um, but the first step right now is to uh, set up the application on the phone that will give us these verification codes without having to wait for a text message. And this is a lot more convenient, and it also opens the door uh, for other services that also use the, this authentication system. Uh, Dropbox uses it, and a, a password uh, management program I use called LastPass uses it also. Uh, so what you want to do right now is go over to the App Store on your iPhone or the Google Play Store on your Android phone or wherever you get BlackBerry apps and search for Google Authenticator and install that app on your phone. And uh, you can click Pause, but we have it installed on this one already. Um, so we're going to continue with the process here. So um, basically, it's giving me a couple of options here. So now I can uh, add a backup phone number. So I could maybe have my, my home phone be a backup phone number. And what that'll do is that if you do lose your phone and you can't get into your account, you can have it call your home phone so that it'll give you one of those authentication codes so you can get in uh, should you have uh, lose your, your phone. Uh, the next option is to use the mobile application, which I pointed you to. And that is something you should definitely set up on your phone. We have an iPhone here, so we're going to do that. And you notice right now it pulled up a barcode. And what's great about this little app is um, on your phone, all you need to do is load up the Google Authenticator app. And there's an option here to scan barcode. So we're going to click that. And it pulls up our phone's camera. And it scans the barcode. And it automatically adds our um, Google Authenticator code to the app. So now I don't have to wait for the text message. I can just load up my app when I want to uh, get my uh, verification code going there. So now what I need to do is type in the verification code that it's giving me. And by the way, what I suggest doing here also is make sure that you have a, um, another mobile application, or another mobile device with you, like an iPad or another Android phone. Uh, because what you can do is get that um, device to sync up with this at the same time so that in case you do lose your phone, you have another mobile device you can use as an authentication step. OK, so now we have the um, phone tied, the phone app tied to the account. So we have both our phone and our app tied to that. And we could add a bunch of phone numbers if uh, we want to do that. Now, there's something else you should do right now, and that is print up some backup codes. And what these will do is give you a set of codes that you can print out and store someplace safe in your house or in a safe deposit box. Or um, you can even store them digitally, you know, encrypted in something like Evernote or something. And what these backup codes do is basically give you another option for um, protecting yourself if you lose your phone and you need to get into your account. So I do suggest doing this and saving them to a text file. And by the way, all of these codes are not passwords. These are just the verification codes that you have to type in after you type the password in. So um, if somebody were to find these codes, they really wouldn't be of any use unless they also had your password. But I would suggest um, putting them in a safe place. Now, these codes can only be used once. So if I use this first code to get in in an emergency, um, I need to cross it off on my sheet. Uh, because that code is canceled after it is used. So that part is done. Now, the next step is you're going to find immediately that all of the things that use Google services but don't use a web browser, uh, so a great example would be mail on your iPhone uh, or your Mac or some other application that you're using to access some kind of Google service. All of those now will not work because uh, you've set up this two-factor authentication system. So uh, what Google has smartly done is created uh, basically uh, application-specific passwords. And we're going to set up one of those right now uh, just to get ourselves um, running here. So you can see it right here, application-specific passwords. And the text is a little bit small, but um, basically it's telling us exactly what I just told you a minute ago, that if you have an iPhone application that requires a um, a password to use that doesn't have access to this uh, multi-factor authentication, we can set up a special password for it. So now we're being asked for our password again. OK, so now we're going to generate an application-specific password. And what we're going to do is give uh, this application a name. So we're going to call this iPhone. And we're going to generate the password. 
And now it's giving us some gibberish here. And um, what's nice is that these passwords aren't too hard to, um, to type out, but they're also very difficult to remember. Now, it's important that you get this in input and tested before you click the Done button, because you will never see this password again. It will appear on the screen once, and then it disappears forever. Um, so uh, just make sure you get everything working. And again, you can always create another password, so it's not uh, difficult to do. Um, but once you get it working, you can click Done. And now what you'll see here is we're brought back to the application-specific screen that we were at before. But you can see now I have iPhone and the date that I created it. And it also keeps track of the last date that that password is used. So um, you know, on my other account, my main account, I have a bunch of devices connected to my Google account. So I've got about, probably about 10 of these. And I can see when they were last used. So if I see a password that was used recently for an application that I don't remember running, uh, it could mean that that account is compromised or something happened that I didn't authorize. And uh, rather than um, give out your, rather than use your main password for everything for these applications, uh, these, these application-specific passwords can be revoked because you, know, you can make 15 of them. And then when you decide that that password is no longer needed, uh, you can simply click Revoke here and it will go away and no one can get access to your account again. Uh, the one caveat with this is that when you are using an application-specific password, that password gets into everything. So you know, when I create another password here, this is really the key to my entire Google universe. So you want to be very careful, just like you are with your regular password, not to have this ha get handed out to anyone. It's only something you should type in once, store it in your device, and never really need to look at it again. Uh, and that's also why Google doesn't let you pull this password back up after you click the Done button. OK, now that our application-specific passwords are set up, we pretty much have this entire account ready to go. Um, you can do a lot of maintenance on this as you go. But I wanted to show you what happens when you try to log into uh, the account from an untrusted computer. And by untrusted computer, it's really an untrusted browser because uh, what Google will do for trusted computers is put a cookie into your computer. It's a fi little file that says uh, this, this browser is OK. Uh, but if you load up a different browser, it's going to ask you for uh, that authentication code. So we're going to hop over to Safari here real quick. And we're going to log in with the account we just created. And now, instead of being brought directly to our Google account, we are brought to a screen here where it's asking us uh, for a verification code. So I am going to uh, switch to my other camera here. And we have our authenticator code up here. I'm going to pull the number off the bottom and get us into uh, the Gmail account right now. So we'll type this in. And there's an option there that I didn't select, but I could make this browser trusted so I'm not asked for that password again. Uh, and now we're in the account, and we can have full access to everything. Uh, just as a reminder, though, you can find all of this um, two-factor authentication stuff uh, stored in your security section inside your account. And you just have to click on Edit to go through all of the phones that you've authorized, uh, show your backup codes again, uh, and set up your application-specific passwords. Um, you can see here at the bottom also, it's telling us that this computer is not trusted. Uh, but we can easily make it trusted if um, we log back in again and click off that checked box for that. So, um, so that's pretty much how you set up the two-factor authentication on Google. And basically what it means is that you have something you know, which is your password, along with something you have, your phone. And it adds a layer of security because if somebody just has your password, they won't be able to gain access to your Google account. And that's a really important thing to have established. And like I said, other email providers do have similar systems, but none are really as good as Google's uh, is right now. So for example, uh, Yahoo Mail does have a code system that they've put in place. Uh, but in addition to sending a text message to your phone, it also will send an email to a backup email address. And if a hacker has a password to that, uh, they can basically get into the account that way as well. So the Google system is a little bit uh, more secure in that it really makes it difficult if you don't have that authentication code to get back in. Now, if you should lose everything, your phone, all those backup passwords, and everything else, uh, Google does have a form you can fill out to get back into your account. It might take a couple of days, but quite honestly, I'd rather have the security of knowing that my identity is going to be uh, validated very specifically rather than have the risk of my account uh, being compromised by someone else. So this does take a little bit of work to get set up, but I really feel it's, it's, it's time to, to start doing things a little bit more securely to make sure that both you and your family, friends, and business associates uh, are protected from people that wish to do 
you harm either intentionally or just uh, by luck of, of, a, of a lucky password guess, if you will. So, um, but definitely uh, set that up. If you have questions, leave them in the comments. Happy to uh, provide any assistance in getting this set up for you. I'm Lon Seibin, and this is the CTTechJunkie.com podcast. Thanks for watching.